you know, Google Summer of Code is not about just developing. It's, it's yeah. about, you know, doing something you love and learning something like, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's very beneficial for you. It's, it's nothing to do with just, you, you're not a, an employee, you like develop code, you just develop code. No, you just learn throughout the program. Hi everyone, I am Shubhi Khanna, the co-founder of UASIR and today we are here with a very special guest all the way from Egypt. So we have Mohammad Shauki with us and um, he is a BSc final year student at Cairo University. He has completed GSOC 2020 successfully and we are really, really excited to talk to him today. So first of all, thank you for all your time and um, yeah, congratulations on completing GSOC 2020. Thanks a lot, Shubhi. You know, um, it's, it's a real pleasure having you here and thank you for visiting me. You know, it's, it's, it's real cool. Thank well, you. I would say the pleasure is all ours and um, there are a whole lot of yeah. people sitting here who are waiting to get inspired. So Yeah, I hope I can benefit them, you know. It's <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I think you're going to do a great job at it. And um, so I'll just start from the very beginning. Why don't you tell us about your journey of preparing for GSOC? Okay, so I started off like late November 2019, I remember. So uh, first of all, I was like, I, I am really keen into contributing to open source. So I decided that Google Summer of Code is just the perfect like program for me to just like intensely contribute to the open source. So I just began at late November. Um, I started off by like picking, uh, like seeing the organizations of 2019, uh, picking up the organizations that I might be interested in. Like I'm kind, I'm kind of like have yeah, like a, an interest, a special interest in machine learning and deep learning. So I started off like picking up the organizations that I might be interested in. Um, this process took me about a month. I did like a huge spreadsheet, spreadsheet uh, contains like uh, 12 organizations or so by then. Um, I started off uh, like after so late December, so that took me about a month. I started off like, um, seeing these organizations, these 12 organizations, what they do, um, their all personal school, their code base, if they have so, uh, their projects during the past few years or so. Um, so, I started, so I started shortlisting those like organizations. Uh, it took me about a month or so, month and a half to come up with the final three organizations that I decided to propose to. Uh, so, um, like a month uh, or so, uh, again, um, I started off like, um, like going in depth about the projects, uh, how, they, how, they, how they want the projects to flow, how, what are the potential, you know, like proposals that I can have for them. Um, generally, there are two kind of projects that you want to have in Google Sum of Code. Uh, the first one is like the organization is out, there, uh, is out there and they have a certain title or a certain product that, you want, that they want to work on. Um, and you just like invest time in reading the literature of this project and stuff like that to end up like having this proposal, contacting the potential mentors or so. Uh, the other type is like you, you just dive into the code and see what you can do with it. Um, propose a solution for an issue or improvement for a feature, something like that. But, you know, 
um, like the three organizations uh, that I had, Robocom, which I was a student at this summer, uh, was one of them, of course. They have their own projects and also they were open to other projects idea. Uh, I started contacting potential mentors about like um, about like two months. Uh, it was late January and February um, 2020, of course. Um, like contacting the mentors, seeing what about my proposals for the projects for different projects, and what about like I can do with their own projects. The the projects list was released by them by Robocomp and the other two organizations so I finally uh, at the beginning of February I started contacting Professor Pablo Bustos which is my mentor this year for my project um, you know I like I, I, I told you that I, I, I'm kind of keen in machine learning and deep learning and like the project, uh, which was under the title of DNS for Precise Manipulation of Household Objects, it was like at the conjunction, you know, of multiple fields that I really like. So I yeah. started contacting the professor and he really gave me hints about, you know, the proposal. I started doing a literature survey about what we can do with both estimation and grasping and stuff like that. So. Uh, I finally managed a mid mid March, I think, mid March 2020, to propose the to submit my proposal, and yeah, that's pretty much it. They both lines are very talk about. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad that you mentioned all the steps. And for those of you yeah. watching, um, you know how Mahomad just mentioned how he had 12 organizations in mind, and then he submitted three proposals. So in GSOC, ideally, you can submit three proposals. So that could be different organizations for whatever project you are interested in. It may change for GSOC 2020. We are not sure. But you must have those top three in mind. Also notice how he started at the end of November so that he could contact his mentors in January and February. Also, shortlisting the projects took him a month, even though he was sure of the tech stack. So that's why it's better to start ahead. Uh, so another thing that I have to ask you, and this is a question that most applicants have, what is something that makes your proposal stand out? Um, okay, like we can say that um, there are several like criteria for having good proposal. It may differ from like one organization to another or one mentor to another, but general, uh, general like guidelines or something. First of all, you have to be specific. Like mentors do not like vague like kind of proposals, uh, whatever it was your own idea or the organization idea, you know, like you have to be specific about uh, the idea, the the work that you formulate, you f you had to formulate your work. Um, uh, one more important thing, like you have to have a, like a table of deliverables with initial dates. Like you know, uh, this was a hint that I took from many mentors. Like you have to have a list of deliverables and like periods uh, or dates, like. Um, to, to, uh, for these developables. Um, this is very important uh, because it makes the mentor think that you, you, you're really getting the hang of it, you know, like, yeah. like you are, you're, you're up to it. Uh, second, second thing I think like um, you have to be some kind of realistic about the project if it's your own idea uh, or about the pipeline uh, or the architecture you will work with if it's the organization's idea. Uh, some students, like, they have really great proposals, but they got rejected just because you can't just do that in three months or less than three months. Like, mm -hmm. this need requires a year or something before. Um, uh, uh, another thing, like, uh, uh, like you mentioned, you have to start early because, like, you can see some organizations that really you really like working for them or something 
but you can actually find out that you can't, that you don't have anything new to give to them. You have to take your time to just go over the organizations over and over and again, um, and set up, you know, their code, try to interact with the channels, whether it's a Slack channel or Git or something like, you have to start a little bit early. That doesn't mean like, not conf to confuse anyone, that doesn't mean if you start late, you won't be able to get in. But yeah, yeah. I have some friends like, they started like late February or even, yeah, like late February. It's yeah. just like two weeks before the, uh, submit, the proposal submission, uh, submission opens. And like, yeah, they are Google Summer of Code 2020, but like starting there early is always give you like a chance to really shine through the, your proposal. And that's yeah. It. And um, I think I liked how you mentioned how you have to take time to go through their code bases, to understand the company, to understand the projects, because yeah. if you don't have something you need to offer, they are not going to take you in. But yeah. that brings me to my next question that, what was your entire process of going from uh, hundreds of organizations to the final 12 and then bringing that down to three final organizations? Uh, okay, like, like I mentioned before, like, it was about, first of all, it was about my interests, like, I, my interests are machine learning and deep learning. Um, second of all, like, I, I, I the, the easiest thing you can do, uh, filtering uh, or uh, uh, fil initially fil shortlisting the organizations is like you go through the last year's projects like you see how the projects flow works um how they think how how, how the how they need the like uh, applicants um you can go to some organizations like you see um all the students, or most of the students are masters and PhD students, for instance, uh, you know that these kind of organizations, they need time for you as a bachelor student or a, something like that. Um, this is one criteria I can mention. Um, uh, so mainly it's about interests, um, previous year projects, and like, uh, yeah, I can see that. Uh, this is th this is I'm talking about the the initial short list, uh, short listing, uh, the final short listing. However, uh, this can get a little bit more complicated because you have twelve organizations. You have to go through like some initial installation of their software or something, um, running through their code base. Like you see, uh, do you are you getting the hang of it? Um, do you have something to offer and um, yeah, that's it. Uh, Extremely helpful. In fact, um, so coming to the most exciting question of the day, uh, could you tell us more about your project? Okay, so um, uh, as I mentioned, it, will, it was under the title of DNNs for precise manipulation of household objects. The main thing that, uh, you know, my project can be divided into three stages, three uh, like three stages. Okay, the first stage is uh, pose estimation, um, where I use deep neural networks, uh, specifically two neural networks, segmentation driven and PVM 3D, uh, to perform precise 6D object pose estimation. The second stage was to um, like mm, drive the robot, uh, the robot arm. Like uh, we, uh, the main idea of the project is to use of DNN estimated poses to drive a robotic arm to grasp objects and like manipulate them, move them, stuff like that. So the second stage was to uh, um, like embed some software or some code inside this uh, robotic arm in order to be able to use these uh, estimated poses in order to uh, do motion planning and stuff like that. Uh, the final stage was the integration stage uh, the integration stage was done on two stage, uh, like two levels. The first level was a pure test level, uh, like Robocom is a component-driven software. So um, 
this uh, this I had to do some test benches and stuff for the yeah. for the old pipeline. And after so, we moved to something called DSR uh, or Deep State Representation. It's a new architecture they they made. So we integrated like the whole pipeline into this uh, software architecture. It was uh, something like uh, it has to do with distributed systems and stuff like that. So this is hey, the final stage. That is a really cool project, though. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, perfect. I think you've summed it up precisely, and uh, people out there are really, really going to get benefited by it. So, uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so yeah, thank you again, and um, you. we will be attaching all of your links, including your LinkedIn profile, your GitHub profile, and the other links and resources that you share with us. So you can go ahead sure. and check it out. Sure, sure. Thank you for having me, and like, uh, I hope uh, everyone like. Get accepted in 2021. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, let's hope for that. All the best yeah. for the applicants. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Good luck, guys.